Hey everybody, today I'm going to do my best to show you how to gauge the success with your Facebook campaign. Now there's two types of campaigns that you're either running on Facebook and it's either e-commerce, online sales, or lead generation, in which case you'd use a lead form campaign or a messenger campaign. So with that said, we're going to dive straight into my PC here. And the first screen we're looking at here is my ad account for the Facebook consulting business where we teach people how to run their Facebook ads and also run ads for clients through their own respective ad accounts, of course. And the first bit I wanna show you is the two lead generation type campaigns. One is generating leads through a lead form, which you can see here in the results column. One says lead, one sends lead, uh, leads, so on and so forth. And also, a messenger campaign where you're generating uh, Facebook messages or inquiries from people. They're still technically leads, but uh, they come through Facebook Messenger and so we call them messenger leads, all right? Still in the form of lead generation or under the topic of lead generation, I should say. Now, very simply, to gauge whether, uh, whether a lead generation or messenger campaign is working well for you is to simply look at how many leads you've gotten or messages you've gotten and then over in the cost per result, look at the cost per result and say to yourself, well, uh, am I closing any of these leads? In which case, if the answer is no, then you might have a sales problem. You might need to refine your sales process to encourage people to go from inquiring with you to spending money with you. That's a sales problem. Or if the lead cost is too high for you, then you have to work out ways to try and bring your lead cost down, which I'm going to go through at the end as a bit of a bonus tip for you all, so hang around for that one. But that's the simplest way to ascertain whether a lead generation campaign and or messenger campaign is going well. How many leads you're getting and how much are you paying per lead or per message and is that sustainable for you, right? If it's not, then something needs to change. Now. Just to address anyone out there who hasn't been running Facebook ads for very long and maybe hasn't even got a lead or got a messenger, or a message I should say, then you want to be looking at a preliminary metric which I consider uh, to be cost per link click. If you go over here to this column section, click the button, go down to performance and clicks, and go over to link click through rate and cost per link click. On average, the vast majority of you should be aiming to get the cost per, sorry, the link click through rate over 1.2%. Take no notice of this because at the end of the day, my cost per leads are sustainable for me. But you can see here on this uh, top of funnel lead generation campaign, which is going out to uh, Australia wide, that link click through rate is double the, the average. So we're very happy with that. And the cost per link click at the end of the day, uh, you'd want to try and keep that under $2, ideally around $1.50. Again, take no notice of these because these campaigns are actually getting leads. So this information, what I'm telling you right now with the link click-through rate and the cost per link click, if you haven't gotten any leads, if you haven't got any messages, then you would need to pay attention to this as a preliminary metric. Ensure that your link click-through rate is over 1.2%. If not, it's probably a crap ad or it's going to an audience who doesn't care or the offer is going to the audience that doesn't care. And try and get your cost per link click under $1.50, okay? The bigger the audience, usually, um, the lower the cost per link click will be normally. So um, keep that in mind. If you haven't got any leads come through yet, then you wanna be looking at, okay, well, let me have a look here real quick. <clears throat> we'll go to, we'll drop down to the actual ad set level, then we'll drop down to the ad level, and, Unfortunately, I'm only running one ad on that, or maybe am I? Videos. Oh no, I'm running two variations of videos. Cool, this is a good example. So, there's two different variations of ads here. I've got two different videos running, right? And you can see here, the cost per link click is hell of a lot lower for this video, 87 cents compared to uh, $2.24, right? And the link click-through rate is a hell of a lot higher for this video as well. Now, ultimately, let me just take two steps back. Ultimately, my cost per lead, which is $15, is sustainable for me. So I'm not too fussed about that, to be honest. Hadn't I've got a lead yet, and it's been 
you know, about two days of advertising, then I would be looking at that breakdown. I'd be looking at my different ads, or was it videos? And I'd be looking at my link click-through rate and I would probably switch that video off. So at least all of my budget was going towards an ad that was delivering me the most uh, uh, link clicks, I should say, or link click-through rate, all right? So hope that one makes sense. So that's what you look at if you're not getting any leads yet. But if you're getting leads, then it's very simply just, as I mentioned, how many leads you're getting and is that cost per lead in the cost per result column sustainable for you? And if you're not selling off any, any of those leads, then you've probably got a sales problem, okay? So that covers lead generation. Now, to look at online in e-commerce, we'll switch over to uh, myself and my mum's e-commerce business where we sell pet products. Still in its infancy, it's about six weeks old of advertising. Um, just looking at the past seven days, some of the things I look at, and this is for those of you who are in drop shipping, um, running e-commerce businesses, selling on Shopify, WordPress websites, Squarespace websites, whatever. If you run ads to a website and they buy off the website straight away and there's no human interaction, there's no need to generate an inquiry or a lead, then uh, this is gonna be relevant to you, so listen closely. Obviously, the easiest metric is to look at how many sales you've gotten, how many purchases, and the cost per purchase and whether that is sustainable for you, all right? So over here, We've got the amount of purchases that we've had this week, which is 13, that's great. And then we've got the cost per purchase over here to the right, which we've got um, $18 per purchase, $33 per purchase, $27, blah, 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 blah. And then our return on ad spend here. Now this one here, the top one, and this one here, the second from the bottom, aren't too flash. I'm usually aiming for at least 2.2. .2. So that means for every dollar that I spend, I'm getting at least $2.20 back. That's an, on average. Now, I've made quite a few optimizations since the part in the fast in the fast in the past uh, seven days. So what I have done here is over the past three days, this should actually look a lot healthier. Yeah, we've got a return on ad spend of three. Okay, so that's looking a lot better. But that's the top level stuff. So. If you've just started an e-commerce brand or you're just starting with Facebook ads, you probably don't have any purchases yet. So the next step down, similar to link click-through rates to look at if you haven't gotten any purchases yet, is uh, the amount of checkouts initiated. So you can see here, the checkouts initiated is when someone adds it to the cart and then goes and initiates the checkout sequence. They get asked for the email, they get asked maybe for payment details, they initiate the checkout sequence. And that's a higher intent. So if someone's initiating the checkout sequence, they are definitely considering purchasing. Um, and just a side note here, for those of you if, you, if you're losing quite a few people at the checkout, when I say quite a few, if you're losing more than about 50% of your sales at the checkout sequence, to look at your delivery and see where you can cut back costs on delivery or add delivery into your, the price of the product, uh, because that might be scaring them away, okay? So checkouts initiated is the next thing. If you're not getting any purchases in e-commerce just yet, then look at the amount of checkouts that you have initiated and just double check whether your cost per checkout initiated is sustainable for you. So if you've got a product that sells for $40 and your uh, net profit margin after delivery when it's delivered to the, the customer's door is $5, then you can't really you can't really spend more than, you know, what, a dollar, two dollars to actually sell that product because your profit margin is only five dollars. So really, similarly, your cost per purchase can't really be over five dollars, otherwise you're not making anything, okay? So I hope that makes sense. And then the last point here, very similar to lead generation, if you're not getting any checkouts initiated yet or if you're not getting any purchases just yet, you can look at the link click-through rate which if we go to performance and clicks again, as we have here, you can see here, one of these campaigns has got a 12.5% link click-through rate, and I'm getting link clicks for um, 0.09. So that's exceptional. We've got one up here that's getting link click-through rates at 1.5% and uh, a cost per link click of 88 cents. So that's well below the um, $1.50 per link click average, which is great and just above the 1.2 link click-through rate average as well, which is what we want to aim for too. So that's all well and good. 
Now, if you need to do some troubleshooting, let's say that you're not meeting these minimum standards, you're not meeting this 1.2% link click through rates, or you're not meeting at least um, getting uh, link clicks for less than $1.50, then you'd wanna be thinking about changing something. Now, whenever we test something, we always test something, whenever we change something and we wanna run a test, we always test it over two days, 48 hours. That just gives you a little bit more time uh, and the algorithm time to discern what's actually working and what's not working, okay? So keep that in mind. And so let's say that you're not getting the minimum standards on link click-through rates or a cost per click. Some of the things you might wanna consider changing if you're not already, um, ask me for the first video that shows you uh, how we set up ads where we test at least three audiences and three ads in the same campaign. That's a really good structure for a number of reasons. So ask me for that video. Or if you go to my Facebook group, I want to learn FB ads, it's pinned to the top. Um, it's an instructional video that goes for 40 minutes, it's free. So watch that. But you just wanna make sure that you're testing at least three audiences and that you're testing at least three different ads. That's about it, okay? So if you're not doing that, do that for starters, because I guarantee one of those ads is gonna have a better link click through rate uh, a better, uh, sorry, a cheaper cost per link click, and ideally, you know, some purchases and or leads in there for you as well. So an example of that would be, let me go in here, new test LLAs, is that the one? That's the one. You can see I've got quite a few different uh, audiences in here. Now you only have to start with three, but then when I go into the ad itself, um, we've got three ads in here. Notice that I've turned two of them off and one of them is still running to date. And the reason for that is obviously because this ad has performed the best. So the difference in these ads is really just the creative side of things. So um, this is a video of someone setting up the actual uh, playpen, the, the dog playpen itself. Move on to the next one. It's a bit more of a slideshow from memory. Very similar uh, kind of text on the top of the ad. And then the other ad here is just uh, basically a, a GIF, really. It's just um, got some stars and stuff in it and then a dog sitting in the playpen. So similar text, those are the variations. So um, this is getting a bit more so into the other instructional video that I mentioned. But things that you can test in your ads is use different images, you can use different videos, and you can use different text. That's a good place to start, just make sure you're running at least three ads in any one audience, especially if you have no idea which ad's working. And then as you can see here, once you find your top performing ad, then continue to run it to it because this particular ad, the reason why I've just turned the other ones off, is getting a, where is it? Getting a 5.32 return on ad spend. That means every dollar we spend, we're getting $5.36 in return. So we've basically spending $9.75 per purchase <clears throat> and, um, and getting, you know, in total about $210 back. So exceptional. Uh, that's e-commerce in a nutshell. Now, when it comes to testing different audiences, as I, as I mentioned, I want you to be testing at least three audiences. So some of the things that you can be testing in different audiences is uh, the uh, interests that you select and also lookalike audiences. These are something that, again, I cover in that other instructional video, so I won't cover it today. Uh, but you're looking for similar things. You know, with audiences and ads, you're looking for very similar things. You're looking for, okay, if I'm not getting purchases yet or if I'm not getting leads yet, out of these ads, which one is delivering the best link click-through rate and the cheapest link clicks? So again, we go down to the ad level, we look at our link click-through rates, we look at our cost per link click, and if those are within those, uh, those thresholds, then we're moving in the right direction. Uh, audiences are the same. So you look at your link click-through rate, or you look at how many leads you're getting on one, on one audience as opposed to the other, or you look at how many uh, initiate checkouts or sales you're getting if you're in e-commerce. Um, and if you're not getting any of those, then you would look at link click-through rate and you would look at uh, cost per link click as well. So if we look at all of these audiences in here that I ran quite a few different tests on, you can see here, if I just click the top, um, one of them that's still running is get two, getting 2.2% link click through rate and a cost per link click of 54 cents, which is exceptional. As we go further, 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 further down, some of them that I've turned off are 
aren't getting anywhere near that link click-through rate. So that's why I've switched them off. So again, just to really nail this one home for you guys is if you are getting purchases in your online store or if you're getting leads and or messages in your lead generation campaigns and your messenger campaigns, then that's what you look at first. You look at how many messages am I getting in these ads? Is there an ad that's getting more messages or leads or sales or initiate checkouts in these ads? Turn the ones off that aren't over a two day period, give it two days to run, and then look at your audiences in the same, uh, in the same space. Are there, out of those three audiences that I should be testing that Rev told me to test, is there audiences that are getting more messages or more leads or more online sales purchases or more initiate checkouts than others? If they're not, then switch them off as long as you've tested them for at least two days, okay? And again, if you haven't got any of that, and all of you, you've got is preliminary data, then look at the ads in the same way and look at, am I getting a higher uh, link click-through rate of at least 1.2%? If so, leave that running. Uh, if not, turn the other ones off, as long as you've been running them for two days. And also take into account your link click needs to be below $1.50. And then do the same with your audiences, okay? Again, are there are some audiences out of the three that I should be testing that are at least over 1.2% link click-through rate or below one dollar uh, fifty link click okay so i hope that makes sense if you guys have any questions by all means ask me send me a message at rebel Auckland, or better yet uh, ask all of your questions in my facebook group uh, so that i can keep them warm one place and i ensure that i answer them in a timely manner now what i'm going to go through <coughs> is a bit of a bonus so one of the things you find out sooner rather than later after running some Facebook ads is uh, that you're probably gonna find a winning ad that has delivered a lot of messages and a lot of leads uh, or a lot of online e-commerce sales purchases and you might wanna get more out of it. So you can run the following test, which I guess I, I call uh, a t an audience segmentation test. So it's actually what I've done. If we look back at my screen really quick is all of this was an audience segmentation test. You can see here, what I usually do is I duplicate a winning audience. I've actually got two winning audiences in this demonstration. And I test a winning audience and I put a daily budget, a, a very reduced daily budget on each one of those audiences. Now the thing about it, just to make it really clear, you have to identify a winning ad, which I have here. So there's only one ad running here and then I identify at least one winning audience, and I'd usually drop the budget down, if this was a client's account, I would usually drop the budget down to about $2 per day. Uh, and that's, for those of you out there who are spending anywhere from $5 a day, right up to $20 or $30 a day, I would say this is gonna be relevant to you. If you're spending more than $30 a day, um, let me know because you're probably gonna need to use slightly higher budgets. But what you do, is you duplicate the winning audience uh, about 10 times and you drop a daily budget of $2 on each one of those audiences, also called ad sets. This is what the ad set level is. And what happens is because it's you know the same audience times by 10 and you've only given the algorithm, Facebook, $2 to find leads or get leads or messages or purchases out of that audience, it has to work extremely hard to get you those purchases and it's really cool. Like it's one of my favorite kind of scaling tactics um, or increasing sales volume tactics, which is scaling. Uh, but what happens over, you test it for about two days max and you're going to find, just like in this account, just eyeball the cost per result here over the past, um, what, seven days? Nearly seven days, yeah, seven days. Uh, this, this campaign's got 12 messages and this campaign's got 25, except this has nearly halved the lead cost, the messenger cost, okay? Now taking that into account, all I've done is I've taken this campaign's best performing audience and I've duplicated it how many times that was. It, that was. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I put a daily budget of $2 on every single one of those audiences. And then what I've done is every two days I go through there and if anyone is underperforming, then I switch it off. Like this one here hasn't got a message, spent seven, uh, nearly $8, so we'll switch that one off. 
All the other ones we leave running and I've basically halved the lead cost. So it's a really good way. You have to have an ad that's giving you purchases or initiate checkouts at the very least if you're in e-commerce. Or if you're trying to generate leads and you're getting leads and or messages, you have to be getting an ad, you have to have an ad that's getting you those. And then you duplicate that winning audience that has those ads within them, has the ad within it, 10 times and drop a, a budget, a daily budget of $2 on each one of those 10 audiences. And then again, the algorithm has to work really, really hard um, to get you that objective that you're trying to do. And then every two days you go in there and you switch off the the audiences, the, the ad sets that aren't getting you either sales or leads and you just rinse and repeat, keep going through it. And it's a really good way to kind of um, scale a campaign. So I hope that provides a bit of insight into ultimately I wanted this video, I put this video together uh, to save myself a bit of time because I answer the same question over and over again. How do I know if my, my Facebook ads working? That's pretty much it. You've got preliminary metrics and then you've got uh, we'll call them ultimatum metrics, you know, the actual purchases, the sales, um, the actual leads, the messages. And if you're not getting those, and as I mentioned, you're looking at link click through rates and you're looking at cost per link click being under $1.50 to start with. As always, if you have any questions, you can let me know in the Facebook group in the comment section and I'll endeavor to help you as soon as possible. I'll talk to you soon. See you later.